to Buhay Parang Life where we discuss issues about this thing called life. In a Catholic wedding, the vows are preceded by three questions. One of them is, prepared to accept lovingly all the children that God will give you in this marriage. So therefore, marriage should always be open to life. But sometimes circumstances dictate that a couple postpone pregnancy. Before I bring you the lovely couple that we have in this episode today, I'd like to ask you, my dear viewers, to please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook page. We value your comments, so please feel free to write down your thoughts and suggestions in the comment box below. Thank you very much. And now, Daniel and Stephen Hung. Hi, Daniel and Stephen. Welcome to the program. Hello, Miss Rita. Good afternoon. <laughs> Kamusta kayong dalawa? Okay, for the sake of our viewers, you are a very young couple. Tell us about yourself. Your courtship, kailan kayo kinasal, what is happening in your life right now? Okay, I think I can take this. Um, Dane and I met in UANP um, as college students. So both of us were still very young then, about 17 years old, about oh. 18 years old, they're about. So uh, our classes were back to back with each other. We were block, we weren't block mates. My classes would always go before hers. So uh-huh. every time I would go, I would every time I would come out of my class, I would always see her. And that was when I saw that this is a woman that I like to court. And then, um, so I so I did court her. Uh, we became boyfriends and girlfriends uh, about eight months. We 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 don't actually count, but uh, but roughly from that point, since we got together, we've been. Uh, We've been texting, we've been calling, and up to marriage, mga 10 years na. Oh, mga, so 10 years na since you met each other, kinasal. Oh, oh sige, Dane, for, before that, oh, ano, naman ang nakiki, ano naman ang nasa isip mo when you would see Steve na mm, tinitignan-tignan ka sa campus? I did not notice, actually. Not at all. So it was, it was because one of my kabarkada was his good friend, and uh-huh. that's when the entire thing happened, like because of that friend of ours that I learned about him. But the way he said that, you know, um, he would see me before his classes because I'm in that class. I never, never noticed him. I don't know. Maybe I was too engrossed with school. Like I wanted to do well in school. That's why I did not. I did not. That's what I'm Steve. Ang guapo guapo mo. Hindi ka na papansin hindi. But then you know, the moment we talked, like after that, I noticed him. Naman. So at least, naman. So ayun na lang yung bawi ko. <laughs> right. So so fast forward to. To the proposal, how long have you been married? We've been married for uh, eight months. Eight months. Eight months. Uh, eight months. So we're we're going to celebrate our anniversary four months from 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 April. Uh, so we got married August uh, 21, 2020. Uh, so we are a pandemic couple. We are a pandemic <laughs> has, uh, pandemic uh, couple. Uh, yeah, we are a pandemic couple. So we we still push through with the wedding despite the uh, uh, ongoing pandemic since we really didn't see any reason to postpone it further as much as we really wanted to invite uh, you know more people in our wedding um, we just decided that we wanted we wanted to focus on the sacrament um, to really push through with our plans together as a couple um, including what we're actually going to talk about today. I just don't want to preempt that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. So being a Catholic couple, you do know that you said I do when you were asked the question, are you willing to accept all the children that God will give you in this marriage? But you have decided, right, to postpone yes. pregnancy. Back it. Well, I guess that goes way back to the past 10 years of our relationship. Everything is really planned. Perhaps because that's how I function. Like I, I'm built with a plan. Like it's very challenging for me not to have timelines, not to have oh, all right. clear, clear things. So even the even the very first time I met Stephen, it I had to clarify from the get go if this is something that is gonna be for the long run because I didn't want to waste time. So 
I guess it was that. So um, when we when we got engaged, the we we were very open to to get pregnant as soon as possible. As, yeah, but right. when when COVID happened and when the pandemic happened and it seems like the things were very uncontrollable and you know the risks are, are very very I, high also um we've decided that perhaps it would be good to postpone it not too long but at least just to give way for all the uncertainties out uncertainties uncertainties outside but you know like even the covid the pandemic kasi also brought about a lot of challenges in terms of you know adjusting because it's right. definitely a very different kind of adjustment from the moment you got married all and you put pandemic on top of it pa. so it was like more a prudent thing to take one step at a time and right. that's why there's that idea of the plan of postponing it for a little bit so pumayag naman so steve was okay with the idea of postponing Yeah, uh, I mar- I got into this marriage knowing that my wife is a planner. So <laughs> it's either I buy in that plan or we destroy that plan. So okay. of, course, I, of course, being being her husband, I had to buy in that plan. And um, I had to, of course, add a sprinkle of my own touch to that plan, which is I also don't want to add to possible anxiety or to the possible uncertainties of... Um, having to go to the hospital and right. deal with COVID positive people. Yes. Uh, so that was actually our main reason. Of um, course, yes. And that want, is very practical. We, did, we didn't want to um, push through with our plans of um, being open to life immediately. So we had to we, we had to postpone just because I didn't want to add to her anxiety um, because that would add another layer of uh what do we have to prepare every time that we have to go to the hospital? But right. then considering the current situations, uh, we don't see where the pandemic in the Philippines will end. So um, factoring in all the uncertainties, we're just going to brave this forward. Um, okay. So and also not to preempt again, but um, <laughs> like, Dane, and I are also, right. Dane and I are actually already trying. Um, already, to, trying. already trying because that's the schedule <laughs> yes, yes. So <laughs> we, we are still within schedule when we plan schedule all... talaga tong si <laughs> so i guess miss rita it's the same with our it's the same story as with as, as our wedding no like um we we plan things and we agree and um we want to always stick to that so w- w- the plan to postpone it was really to plan it uh, to, to postpone it until March and okay. we both agreed that if what whatever happens after that the same way with our wedding that whatever happens on August we will figure it out and we will <laughs> we will do it already because again as I mentioned the plan was really not to to delay it for as long as we want to but it was more like let's try to because I guess when we got married Miss Rita it was very very vague as to how things were gonna pan out eh. so right. it was more like you know let's see how it's gonna go but as what Steven said mukhang malabo and you know um, we also want to take a step forward in, in into this into this union so perhaps like God will provide one way or another so it should be fine right. I say amen to that okay so when you going back to that time that you decide to postpone pregnancy, what did you decide on what me- did you, de- of course you have to decide what you will use. Okay. So being the planners that we are, <laughs> we also uh, took classes uh, with the Billings ob- ovulation method. You took um, classes. Okay. Yeah, we took classes. We took classes a month before we got married. Um, it is uh, with uh, Sir Ganar. Uh, yes. The 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 classes were very short, actually one hour, uh, one hour sessions for three meetings. Um, Sir Gunnar was able to tell us the end to end application of BOM that gave us an idea of how to push through with natural family planning without risking the health of my wife, without risking right. um, the the consummation of our matrimony. Also, uh, Stephen, you were the one who who 
who actually discovered Raleigh Ganar. Yeah. So uh, I can ima- yes. Hey, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so I can imagine the decision was mutual. It was not like si Dane lang ang may gusto. It was actually a mutual decision. Yeah, so again, being the planners that we are, uh, we always go back to that. Uh, we go back to the drawing board and say, uh, what, what, what values are we aligned with? And what do we want to do as a couple together moving to, to take this family forward? And um, since both of us agree that maybe we can wait, uh, wait out uh, the pandemic, uh, we had to naturally look for a teacher or a method that will align with our own virtues, with our own values. So yes, I agreed with her. And this is a decision that was uh, decided by the both of us. So bring us to your drawing board. When you wrote down all your values or what you want out of this method, what do we see? And wow. your values as a person, as a couple, that is aligned with the method of uh, with the billings ovulation method okay the first thing that comes to my mind is the general openness to life um, we went in um, learning about the uh, bom uh, knowing that there may there there are there is a possibility that um, we may conceive even if we follow that um, yes. yet we still uh, push through with using it uh, but we had at the back of our heads that if we do conceive while we follow the method it's all okay because the end goal of this is actually to have a baby still not to just prevent having an offspring it's actually to have a baby although at a later time but if we go in and use it and we conceive we have no problems with that what about you, Dane? What are your personal values that is that you saw was aligned with the Billings method? Um, I've heard a lot of stories of women, even friends, that were really finding it very hard to conceive. So even even at an earlier age, I think I was in my high school. My mom was very close with her OBGYN that um, I would go with her and then she, one way or another, we would talk to the point that she became a ninang in our wedding because okay. <laughs> parang, parang all of us really went through her. And so she was kind of like a, you know, like a, uh, another tita that, that you like. So she would always reiterate like how to, how to be healthy all the time, how to make sure that you record your menstrual cycle, how you, how you pretty much ensure that, that your reproductive system is working well. That way, you will not have a hard time in, in the future. And one thing that, that's something that I really tried my very best to keep. I, I try to exercise all the time. I try to eat healthy. I drink a lot of water. I, I try to do that. And then when we met Sir Ali and we discussed those, it was very nice to see that this entire BOM promotes that also, promotes that healthy cycle right, for the yes. woman. So with I, I feel like that even improved everything further because it prioritizes that also but i guess the, the the more important that we really agreed and that we we want to highlight is really that that openness to life like it from even before meeting serali the very fact that we both aligned from the very beginning that we want this to end up in marriage and of course marriage is equal to having family having children in the future that's really the the one that BOM supports very much and it's very nice to to have that alam yun parang kasi we I don't have to think of um taking pills or even forgetting them and then getting so anxious i i heard a lot of stories that um are are are, are into that or feeling that you, thinking that you might be infected because of whatever thing that you inserted in your in your body that's artificial. You know, I did not have to go through those, and it was such a good, it's such a breezy experience. More importantly, during the pandemic, I mean, you don't add unnecessary stress in your life. You just do the method, and it's very easy, by the way. So, so okay, you 
but before going to the to the method being easy i can imagine that in your circle of friends and even some family members yeah. some of yeah. them will just tell you just just take the pill it's the sure. most uh, convenient way so yeah. how did you respond to those suggestions i think it was more of why are you not yet pregnant why are you taking this it was more of that it was not uh it was not uh because you suggestion. are newlyweds yeah. all right yeah. so why uh -oh. are you not yet pregnant uh oh but it was more of that na parang, what are you doing why are you not why are you not <laughs> pregnant so um it it was a good opportunity to actually share it and surprisingly the feedback is really it's overwhelmingly good like People then apparently hindi alam ng mga tao and and they are more curious about it. So this is not just within um family, but even my group of friends. The group because most of my friends now are also like in long term relationships. Some are engaged, right. some are planning to are, are engaged already, and so so it was a good opportunity to share it with them. And and mind you, Ms. Rita, like everyone is just so excited about it because I guess everyone is hearing the contraceptive part of, of right. protecting it. Right? So this is such a, a new thing for them that, and more importantly, it, it's being supported by the church, even, even endorsed by the church. And these friends yes. of mine also have the same values pretty much as, as we have. So they also want to, to keep that. So it's so because, it's guess, David. Becomes, Go ahead. It becomes sort of a conversation starter. Um, yes, we got married August. Naturally, um, the people around us expect us to already have a baby. But the thing that we tell them is we, are, we have a plan and we want to stick with our plan. But mind you, uh, we're doing this with a method that is aligned with our values. So that would be the BOM. And then that's where we start the conversation of um, maybe you can actually talk to Sir Ganar. Uh, maybe you can talk to Sir Ali. Um, both of yes. you, since the both of you are already engaged, it's this the best time to talk about it so that when you enter marriage, you don't get surprised and say, Hindi ko yung plan ako, if you have a plan. So you talk right. to Sir Ali as early as now so that you're aware of what to do uh, once on your wedding night. So share with us your experiences with the Billings Method. How did you do the charting? This is a daily thing that you do? Yes. So I most of the responsibility falls on me because I'm yes. the one being monitored. <laughs> you are monitoring, I'm, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm monitoring my discharge. So right. um, And then um, we were lucky to be mentored by Sir Ali all throughout the process. So what's good about the, about the, the, the class is um, he will offer, I, I think he offers it to everybody. He will offer that um, he can guide you for at least a month. Um, and then right. because during that time, both of the couple, both both of you are still trying to, to get used to the entire system. And so what happens is I report my discharge and then Stephen takes note of it. But then during that first month, like he would help us confirm if we're actually noting it the right way, if we're if I'm describing it the right way, that way the the report is more accurate. But then what's good about it also is he said that, you know, if after the first month that you think you are not yet comfortable, just keep on sending. It's it's very easy. It's very fast. Lang naman kasi you check your discharge at six in the evening and then you you update him. That's it. Like wala, wala nang other explanations whatsoever. So whatever you see, you just tell him. Um, I think the the more concern of most people is, you know, this is somebody like a teacher that you look you you look up to, and then you're gonna be revealing something that's very, very personal. personal. <laughs> Sometimes it might be a challenge to to the women. But um the way I saw it, because Ms. Rita was more like again, it goes back to this is the intention to why we're doing it and this is the best route to do it in order for it to be effective in terms of what objectives that we want to to fulfill in the future either to to postpone it first or either to to conceive already so i found that 
I found I found that more compelling for me to really work with him. And then so yon. So um eventually Steven Steven is now taking over our chart. We're still charting. <laughs> Sir Ali still, still charting. Yeah. Sir Ali still still reviews them or um well he still keeps my chart. And then Stephen has his also, so I sometimes they like share notes as to how they <laughs> they recorded it. So very easy talaga siya, as in very easy siya. What about you, Steve? Did you not find it weird that your wife will be sharing something very personal to a teacher, and that you have to chart, you have to make sure that what you are seeing or what she saw was actually accurate? How did you feel about it? So. With the teacher part, I know Sir Ali to be a very professional person, and yes. he has been doing this for a long time. And I'm pretty sure, as with other uh, BOM instructors, they will they have the uh, obligation to keep what you talk about in that messenger group or in that phone call or in that Zoom call as confidential as they can. Some might feel that. It is a burden, or it might, oh, especially I'm talking to the husbands, since most likely yes. you're in the charts. Um, mm-hmm. Look at it as your plan together and your um, your method of bringing yourself together um, in in coming up with a concrete plan moving forward in terms of having a baby. Um, don't see it as a burden on your side. See it as a journey together. So joined it together. Were you not scared uh, during the first two months of practicing the billings to postpone? Were you not scared that uh, though you were told that she would be safe that evening, were you not scared that mm, perhaps she's not, perhaps she might conceive? Was that, uh, did, did, did that thought come to your mind? No, yung mga no. first two months. Oh, yeah, no, not at all. Hundred percent confident. No, hundred percent confidence. Actually, oh, again, wow. because we're going in using this method with the mindset of being open to life. Uh, oh, right. We have full confidence with the method, but there is a possibility, as said by Sir Ali, that it may um, end up uh, in conception. So. With that thought being prepared already in our heads, at the back of our heads, uh, we went in with full confidence. So the key there is actually just the openness to life. If plans go sideways, you just uh, you adjust accordingly. Right. So share with uh, anything, Dane? Go Sir, ahead. Rally, Sir Rally, when he presented, when he did the lecture, he was showing us numbers as to how many people have done it already and how and that it's 99.9% very effective effective right. diba parang um actually the confidence really came in when we saw the number of people that have been using it and we said that you know it won't yes we will be very open to life we that's that's very clear but at the same time we also believe in the in the method after seeing the numbers because even seeing that this is not only tested here in the Philippines, it's accepted yes. internationally. The people that founded it have been have been doing it for the longest time. Like it was not a point where we would doubt because because the the numbers were actually saying the the right things that we we right. want also. So yeah, not not at all. And I guess because we religiously follow the method, like we. Right. Maybe because we are very like planners, like we don't like changing things. I was about to say that it helps yeah. that you are very systematic. Yeah, so we don't like changing things. Like, you know, if it's black, it's black, it's white, it's white. So um, I guess that helps a lot. <laughs> helps a lot, right. So share with our viewers, Dane and Steve, all the virtues, the skills that you learned while practicing the Billings Method and maybe the things that you discovered in each other as you practice the method. Okay, first thing that comes into my head is really discipline. Um, discipline and being discipline and faithfulness to um, discipline in in charting and faithfulness to the plan of the couple together. So those two things. So discipline because um, again, I, I, I it doesn't take ten seconds of your ten seconds of your day to record and to chart. So. To do that every day consistently, um, if you're delaying for six months, if you're delaying for three months, it takes a lot of 
um, disciplined to do that. Um, I'm not saying I'm disciplined, but I'm just saying that because I was faithful to our plan together, um, I was able to do it. So those two go hand in hand. And those two were developed because uh, we talked to each other. We were very open to each other and say and said that uh, we want to conceive uh, six months after the wedding. So with that goal in mind, we just work together to achieve that goal. I think okay, Ms. Pita, what? what I what I want to highlight here is um I remember there was this slide from Sarali um showing how chastity is practiced in terms of following this method that chastity is not just not just not doing it, not not engaging into the marital act at all. Um, it also goes with you you engage into marital act when 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 the when the method tells you to do so. But um he he goes by saying that um this method will really help you respect each other even more because you know when you should be engaging into the marital act and you know when you should not be engaging into the marital act depending on depending on your objective so you know it, it helps a lot wow such wisdom from a very young couple okay your final message to our viewers those who are engaged or newlyweds like you mm, okay so first thing is be open to each other in terms of communication. Um, do not expect your partner, um, your husband, uh, your your uh, fiance, to uh, to know what you have in your mind. Say it out so that so that your your plans are aligned. Because without communication, um, BOM will definitely fail. Yeah. Because if you're if you don't talk to each other openly about such plans um you will your supposed plans will be the real um so that's one thing and um plan as early as you can um do do a six month or a one year um uh foresight or a yeah. forecast on what you want to happen after the wedding uh, so of course you'll be busy planning the wedding you'll be busy um thinking of covid and all these things but to the both of us our experience was those are frills focus on the sacrament and look look past that day uh, as your future together not just that day as the end that day is the start of what you will be doing for the rest of your lives since we're talking about bom here also talk about how um how you foresee uh, yourselves planning for a baby? I think baby. I can I can take a step back. I can piggyback on that and, and take a step back and really um, try to pinpoint the values that you both believe in. That is very critical, most especially during the pandemic. And I think everyone will be, you know, going through this in, in the next year. Um, the reason why Stephen and I were not so affected by reducing our guest list from 300 to 30 is the fact that it's very clear to us why we want to get married. And that's because we want to get the sacraments. And what we'd rather focus on is really the plan after that wedding so the plan after the wedding is really the most crucial part and don't expect it to be to pan out when you're married al already like you have to talk about it beforehand you have to align like which one do you prefer why do you prefer that like it's good also to to not be forced to like what the other like um it's good that both are as what steven said like you have to keep your open communication because it's it's good to understand which both sides are coming from and see how you can how you can meet halfway that way like you know with with our case like i told i told steven this is what i prefer should we should we conceive and he has his he has his reservations but at the same time he also has his um the benefits to why he wants this route instead so like we we met halfway and you know this is this is where we are now so i guess that's that's very very critical like it cannot be a what gown will i wear what shoes will i wear who's gonna be designing this and that because like after four hours that's all over and you know you have like, 
an entire lifetime to prepare. And if you did not get to do that beforehand, definitely like everything else will be very, very challenging. And we don't we don't want that, obviously. So I guess to the to the young ones, like they I'd like to think that most of the young ones are are into this page also. So it should not be as as challenging as as how people are are, are seeing it. So yeah. If Thank we did, this, so everyone much. should have should have done should, should, can do it also. Like we did not know, but you know we had to just figure it out. So everyone can figure it out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dane and Stephen. I I pray that you will have abundant blessings in your life. Thank you for your time. Thank you for that you imparted in this episode. Sorry, Maraming salamat. Yes. May our homes be cradles of life. We ask the intercession of Saint Joseph. So that like their home in Nazareth, our homes will also be a sanctuary of prayer, of love, of respect, and of work. St. Joseph, patron of families, pray for us. This is Rita Dairit reminding you today, haba-habaan po ang pasensya sa pagkatang buhay, parang life. <laughs> <laughs>